Hello, I'm Dr. Fatah Vazirachi. I'm the Director of Interventional Endoscopy at Centra Care St. Cloud Hospital in Minnesota and a member of the American Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy Quality Assurance and Endoscopy Committee. On behalf of my co-authors and committee, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to present to you today our recent communication published in the forthcoming issue of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. As I mentioned, I'm presenting on behalf of our committee and the information provided today would not have been well gathered without their input and recent efforts with guidance from our ASGE governing board. The title of our document is Interventions to Improve the Performance of Upper GI Endoscopy Quality Indicators. It is a universal consensus that all patients should have access to high quality endoscopic procedures. So what is quality in healthcare? This can be defined as the degree to which healthcare services increase the likelihood of desired outcomes. These outcomes are providing consistency with professional knowledge, which equates with evidence-based practice, efficiency, which can equate with cost effectiveness, and finally, importantly, minimal risk equating with safety. Having now identified this definition, it follows that transforming this concept into a measurable effort is the best next step since that we can't improve what we don't measure. This results in the identification of quality indicators that strive to achieve these tenets. These quality indicators define the minimum standard and measure performance against it in order to identify those with poor performance so that their performance can be improved by education and retraining. The importance of quality in healthcare in general and endoscopy in particular stems from what it achieves. It improves the care delivered. It decreases the burden of inadequate procedures. It curtails morbidity and mortality. It achieves a cost-effective model and it assuages medical legal concerns and fiscal concerns to stakeholders. In the rising demand for healthcare, Payers are looking for efficient, cost-effective interventions, but it's not that simple. Value-based care puts what patients value at the center of all we do. So we're moving from high quality care to high value care model. And for us, specifically in endoscopy, to delivering high value diagnostics and high value interventions, our GI societies have been prescient, putting programs in place to ready us for these evolutions in healthcare delivery and payment reform. So in 2006, the ASGE, in collaboration with the American College of Gastroenterology, formed a task force on quality in endoscopy, which developed the first quality indicators for endoscopic procedures, which were later updated in 2015. So how can we evaluate quality in endoscopy? It is difficult to retrospectively judge the quality of an endoscopic procedure for many reasons. Direct observation outside the confines of a training program is not possible. Depending on the type of the procedure, adverse events are rare in endoscopy and may not relate to poor quality when they happen. This poses challenges when trying to judge a low from a high quality procedure and demonstrate the need for objective, clinically relevant, easily measurable and representative parameters to assess quality. Those parameters are called quality indicators. These indicators should be clinically relevant, readily measurable, reflective of the highest quality of care, correlate with improved outcomes and are based on evidence. And when applied to the endoscopic procedure can be divided into three domains, which represents the domains of the endoscopy pre, intra, and post procedure. As outlined in the quality indicators documents produced by the ASGE, there are quality indicators common for all endoscopic procedures, be it upper endoscopy, colonoscopy, endoscopic ultrasound, or ERCP. In the pre-procedural arena, proceeding for an appropriate indication with informed consent, outlining clear risk stratification for the patient, providing prophylactic antibiotics when needed, addressing antithrombotic management, and performing a procedural timeout. During the procedure, ensuring a complete exam with photo documentation of key findings and documenting the medications given, as well as logging any events. 
And after the procedure, having a discharge protocol with instructions, communication of the results, and providing a satisfaction survey. For upper endoscopy, in addition to the common quality indicators for all procedures, priority indicators are also identified, delineated in the slide with the green star, as well as other indicators. Those emphasize the appropriate antibiotics prophylaxis and delivery of important therapies before commencing the upper endoscopy. During the procedure, sampling protocol adherence and a systematic approach to the description and sampling of Barrett's esophagus or other pathology, in addition to the accurate characterization of high-risk stigmata lesions during GI bleeding and therefore delivery of therapy. In the post-procedural phase, delivery of important therapies such as proton pump inhibitors in peptic strictures after dilation, as well as peptic ulcer disease management, in addition to providing a follow-up plan such as repeat EGD to check on peptic ulcer disease healing. In this context, given the pervasiveness of upper endoscopies and their performance by providers from different disciplines, well-defined quality measures should be established. Therefore, we aim to perform a systematic review of the literature to delineate interventions and measures to improve the adherence to the ASGE quality indicators. To give a broad summary of the findings, the specific intervention stems from the specific clinical scenario. To increase documentation of quality indicators, audits, and order sets, as well as providing templates for documentation and training programs can be implemented. To increase adherence to medications, order sets and standardized timeout sheets might help. And for specific pathology issues, such as Barrett's esophagus or peptic ulcer disease, focused educational interventions may be key. As an example, recent meta-analysis showed that approximately 20% of upper endoscopies are performed for inappropriate indications. When upper endoscopy, however, is performed for an appropriate indication, the rate of clinically meaningful findings is higher in all age groups. An intervention that was found during the systematic review was the implementation of a virtual clinic and decision trees which decreased the burden of inappropriate EGD referrals. Several studies also looked at implementing order sets or action sets in the protocolized management of upper GI bleeding. Their implementation streamlined hospital stay and avoided unnecessary medications. And when such order sets were implemented in GI bleeding and cirrhosis, they improved not only overall adherence to quality practices, but also the timeliness of initiating therapy. From a pathology standpoint, in the Enigma study, adherence to the upper endoscopy sampling guidelines in patients with signs of gastric pathology was poor, even in European academic centers. A comparative study in two cohorts, control and intervention, showed that a simple training program improved adherence to upper endoscopy quality indicators, including sampling. So in conclusion, a focus on quality in endoscopy is relevant and is directing how endoscopic procedures are conducted and reimbursed. Efforts from GI societies to delineate quality indicators that are reportable, measurable, and scalable are underway. The sparsity of data on interventions to improve our endoscopy quality indicators and future research should focus on key practices conducive to optimal diagnostic and or therapeutic yield, as well as optimal patient safety. Thank you for your attention. And on behalf of my co-authors and on behalf of our ASGE Quality Assurance and Endoscopy Committee, I would like to thank Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for providing us with a forum to discuss our forthcoming document. Thank you.